What's up guys, Dude Basin here checking in. Um, I decided to start a little project. Um, today's the 31st, no, 30th. Um, getting ready for the new year, so um, I figured um, we start a little a little speaker box project. So I got all my material here. This is all um, salvage stuff from, um, from a job we did. They were throwing away some cabinets, so perfect you know plywood birch so the project today is for a Rockford Fosgate P1 that I had laying around for a while got all my uh, specs displacement of the sub is uh, 0.184 cubic feet the Box volume recommended by the manufacturer is 1.79. The dimensions I came up with it's 16 by 27 by 12, which gives me a 2.24 cubic feet box volume, internal box, box volume. And um, I subtract the displacement and I get 2.06. 274 and then we go to our port we got an 8, eight inch port tuned to 80 hertz port length is 4.5 we go to calculate the port volume so it's it's about a uh, you guys seen my ports they're about an eighth inch thick so I came up with a 0.01488 port volume so our final volume will be 2.04786 now that's going to change a little bit it might increase might it's probably going to decrease a little bit probably roughly to the two two cubic feet mark I'm aiming for reason being is that I will fiberglass the front piece of the box so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it a little contour so I'm gonna kick out the, the sub I mean the ring and and feather out so it's gonna give it a you know yeah it's gonna decrease the volume by a little bit so it shouldn't be by much this is roughly what it's gonna look like from the top you know taking into consideration that right here is where I'm gonna have my my trim ring for the for the sub to mount it and on the bottom for the 8 inch port <clears throat> so I got all the tools out I'm gonna go ahead and um, I guess start with my first cut, which will be two at ten and a half inches. Okay, so I got all my cuts um, ten and a half inches wide. So now, um, let's see. I gotta go ahead and miter these. I got two at 14, I think, 14 and a half. And um, let's see if they came out 10 and a half. Yep, perfect. And I got two at 26. Um, 26 and a quarter, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut those, and then we're gonna start putting them together. Okay, so uh, I cut all my pieces to the length. These are my 14s and a half. These are my 27s, full length, length of the box. These are gonna go in the inside of here. And um, our final measurement, 16 inches, is gonna be from outside of this one to outside of this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the glue and uh, start gluing those together, nailing them together. And then, uh, We'll get some screws on there. Well, I might just do nails. This is just one sub. It's not going to be a lot of pressure in there, so should be all right. And then we'll cut our top. Okay, guys, I got uh, the box pretty much nailed and clamped. I always like to, uh, even though I put glue and nails, I like to clamp it anyway. See, so the glue squeezes out, and uh, you get a real excellent hold. 
you don't want this thing falling apart later on and I also like to um, once I already have everything nailed together and clamped I like to take the bottle the corner and and just run it like this just like that see and um, even though I caulk all my boxes I like to put a little bit of glue on the corners so it holds a whole lot better okay cut the bottom um, this one was painted so I'll see how well the glue holds on to it so I'm just gonna go ahead and put glue all around the perimeter nail it on flip it over caulk it and uh, go on to the next step for the fiberglass to get it ready for the fiberglass okay got the top on or the bottom um, got some clamps on there all nailed as you can see already set up my uh, table saw to chop it up to the uh, to the right measurement on this side which is eight and a quarter from here to whatever and then uh, I'm gonna figure out what kind of shape I'm gonna give this I don't know I was thinking maybe an angle and then um, plateau right here on the top um, the size of the um, sub and then again the angle or I'm gonna just do a diameter and then the fleece is gonna stretch over into like the the ring so I don't know I'll figure that out so let me go ahead and um, get that cut and uh, we'll go from there okay um, I cut the pattern that I wanted or well, the shape of the box that's what it's gonna look like fleece is gonna wrap all around this I cut a 45 on this so I get almost a zero edge I guess I'm gonna run it to like midway staple it midway and then once I get the bundle and everything it should come out to the edge um, just to give you guys an idea it's gonna be like this for the 12 and then the port right next to it right here okay guys um, it's like I don't know, maybe like 3 o'clock. Yeah, 3 o'clock. This is what I got done so far. Got the port ring in there. Got the subwoofer ring in there. Um, that's what it looks like. I think it's going to look pretty good, so we'll see the port is going to slide in from the inside once this is all done I think it's only like four inches long so slide in pull up it has two rings here one for the outer diameter of the port and this one for the inner so it can't slide further than this ring right here and then we got the ring for the uh, speaker let me show you how that's gonna go here's the uh, Rockford trim ring that comes with the speakers this is going to sit in like that and speakers going to be in there so once we got the speaker this thing's going to come out probably almost flush not quite but almost so it's going to look really really nice so now I'm going to go get the fleece and um, we're going to start stretching that alright guys I got the um, fleece all stretched out um, one thing to remember is your gun usually has a space you can see right there from the side of it to the part where it shoots the nail that's usually about an eighth so you put that on the edge of your plywood and then shoot the nail because that way you have about an eighth you see here that way when you trim this you can finish it off with your bondo and it looks perfect um, one thing to remember is you leave about an eighth to a quarter inch gap between each table 
depending on how it's laying out. For example, here I missed a spot, so so you gotta make sure it's it's about a about a quarter inch. I like to put an eighth, just so the um, the resin adheres very well. Um, because I like to really, really stretch it. I don't. If if you leave it, you know, not stretch. If you don't stretch it all the way, um, it requires more resin to cover this. And either way, this is not strong to just say, "Hey, I just want to leave it like that." I'm not going to reinforce it with matting because it's not. It's not strong. So, best thing to do is stretch it as much as you can, and uh, that way you don't you don't have to soak it as much. And then um, you can just finish it off with your matting. So I'm pretty much just um, making sure I got everything. Um, looks pretty good, so I think, I think that's it. Uh, this thing's looking beautiful, I tell you right now. I like the way it's gonna turn out. Um, so I'm just right now finishing off any places where it still needs a nail or two. Uh, we're pretty much ready to get on with the matting. So um, I am going to staple around this ring on both because that's the part that uh, is going to make sure that the movement, the the linear movement from the subwoofer, won't pull it apart from the ring. Because sometimes the fleece tends to not soak in the resin all the way across to the other side and um, that means that your your resin is not bonding with your plywood and if it's not bonding with the plywood when you're playing the subs it's going to start moving and it's going to come apart from the layer of, of material you got here from the from the fabric and it's going to separate from the plywood so we're going to go ahead and, and staple all the way around it this one doesn't have to be an eighth just leave a quarter that's good enough because again this is just to reinforce it so 